Like even with heartbreak. Really think about that. Heartbreak. When we talk about heartbreak. Heartbreak when we we're 18 and 19. I really absolutely believe that promotes growth. Mm-hmm. Promotes maturity, understanding, uh, learning how to deal with breakups, things that go along with that. You know, it's just like a maturity with, with, when we were kids, you know. Kid who liked a girl, the, the boy who liked a girl back in the day. Throwing rocks. First thing you do is you throw stuff at her, you hit her, you, you pull her <laughs> hair and stuff like that. That's how you show how you say that. That's how some people do it. What I'm talking about. <laughs> and so, so even with that, you know, I think back to first loves and girls I was so into back in the day when we broke up. I was just devastated. So I look back at that now. I was, oh man, that was just like you swear back then that young love, that puppy love. You swear this is going to be the one. This is the one I'm going to marry. And and literally. 250, 300 later, you know, that's not the that one. Many, that many, that many, many, wow. I, I, let me be clear. I keep it real, baby. I've actually counted. I, I, definitely over 250. And I, I don't say that with pride. I, I say that with like, holy smoke. I, did you do that? Oh, yeah, I did it. Because I Were remember. You at auction when you did that? Like 35, 35, 35. <laughs> So, <laughs> to the man with the giant jersey on. Yeah, so when you, 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 he was like, Oprah, you, yeah. you get the D, you get the D. I was, I was short with bad teeth, so I, I had. <laughs> he lied. <laughs> he lied. This dude showed me he, he had photos looking like Nelly with a yeah, exactly. bag on. Yeah, no, I had a stand mm-hmm. when I had a six pack. Uh, no, I, I, you know, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I stopped counting after like 30, but it's somewhere around there. But 250, that's what? See, I think. Thank God you saved. You say that. <laughs> I was never one to, uh, in, in respect, you know, we, we love our wives and we, yeah. we wouldn't be where we're at, you know, um, if we didn't walk those journeys to appreciate who we're, who mm-hmm. we're with now. Um, but I can say, you know, going back to heartbreak, it does promote maturity. It does promote growth. I remember vividly, it's weird to think about it because we're talking about when I was 12 years old, I was like, dang, you know, that hurt. It hurt so much, like my whole world literally collapsed and I couldn't like, it was hard to breathe. Like my boys was like, oh, there's plenty of fish in the sea. I was like, I didn't want any other fish. Uh-huh. Like I love my salmon, give me my salmon. Fish. Right, mm-hmm. you know? And mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest challenge was um, about being the first. It was the first time I actually openly gave my heart to someone. Mm-hmm. And when to have that crush to, to feel like you didn't appreciate what you had, like you you threw it away for this, that guy, like that guy. I was like, oh, my God. And the sad thing is, looking back at it, I ain't going to make you drop. I ain't going to make you drop. Do it. But you know, 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 like she came back and was like, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. And I was like, but this cruise has left the port. Right. Like you don't get that chance. Right. Now, how are you 12? Uh, realistically, no, I was realistically, I was about 15. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. But it was about that. But, you know, from that 12 to 15, like you're still running the dynamics of how you interact with these girls. Yes, yes. Like, you know. Oh, I bought you an ice cream. I was that guy. I wasn't throwing rocks. I was like, yeah, I got you a Sunday." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, on a Tuesday. <laughs> Real talk. But that was where, like, the, the night dynamics of was like, I am willing to open my, my heart, my feelings, and share this with you. And you took it for granted. And that betrayal was so devastating to realize I was compared and left for this person, this other person who ran you through the mud was looking at and up literally in three, four other women, and now you're another check mark on his list. You were never that a check. You were you were the prize. And yeah. to realize that at the age of 15 and to understand that I had to go through growth. I, I had so. to go through maturity. Yes. And to realize, okay, I'm not that, and I don't mean any disrespect, I trust me. I, I never did kept count, right. but I had my, we, we all did, yeah, exactly, you know, I didn't always walk with Christ, you know, kind of thing. But my point being is, I realized who I was and who I wanted to be and who I wanted to run with me, even as someone in dating. That's, that's deep. I, I think I'm going to flip it on you real quick, a quick story. I don't think we always matured through these life lessons. One of my guys, uh, the one that got away, um, they were dating in college. And she got pregnant and she aborted the child and it devastated him. Mm-hmm. Then she went on to marry and get with some other guy and have a beautiful family. And he still to this day 
looks at her like, why wasn't I good enough to have a baby with? And now she's gone on and she's thriving and he still hasn't gotten over it. He still hasn't healed from it. That was evidently his first love. Mm. And so it speaks to the tweet now that he he never healed from it. So maybe that tweet is based on what, like it's you said, Larry, he hasn't healed. He's hurting. Yeah. He comes from a place of hurt. So not everybody matures through those lessons. Some get stuck in the DeLorean in 19, 1955 and never come out of that. Mm. But on the other account, let me just ask, wouldn't that be kind of a concern? That you are now in your thirties, forties, this age, and you still haven't gotten over absolutely over that well. Yeah, that's how many well, well, so oh, getting yeah. over it, or or, no. or but, just but everybody like, handles trauma differently. Yeah, like because yeah. think about it, it's not just like oh she broke his heart, right? That's one level. But yeah. like you aborted, yeah, a child. That's yeah, something that's you know, because that's child. that's a whole thing. Yeah. You, I, I can imagine myself or anyone here not being able to get over that. And still that, you know, having that be a part of, because that's a part of your personal history. It's yeah. like, I could have, what could that child have been? See, and I'll piggyback off that. It was so, uh, again, I had to go through my maturity. I came from a background where, I'll, I've said it before, We, my family has mafia mentality. You come in, you don't get out. <laughs> okay. So if I put that, my mindset in where he was at, he, in like, in that front, right, he's like, I, that was my legacy. That was my son. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I can say this. I come from a family where I'm the only male that carries my last name. Same here. Like, Same here. I have sisters, but I'm the one carrying the last name. So if you stepped out yep. and then you aborted that, like, you just killed my lineage. Mm-hmm. And it hurts. And, and then you just, you just fall into uh, the, the rabbit hole on where, where my family could be, what my grandkids could be like. You ruined all of that for me. Like, I'm just from that yeah, topic. Yeah, she, so she had every right like to do what she did. He felt betrayed, but um, he's hurt. I don't know if she had every right to do what well, she, she, well, she, well, she, well, well, she did. To me, she had every right because it's, they weren't married, and there's a lot of things that go into that, and they, yeah. they were young, and all those things that we, we just said that we would do differently later in life. Maybe she has regrets with that. I don't know. But I know she's moved on, right. and, and it's gone on and thriving. Yeah. Yeah. And he and sees he, what he could have had. He sees her children, he sees yeah. her husband. Right. And so he wants to be in that spot, yeah. like you said, and he's not there. And so it's a constant reminder that- Yeah. Is he married? And so no, the and he's, he's never been married. He never had kids. And and so you and look at, he uh, he's our age. See, to, to, defend, her, man. to yeah. defend her too, she's the one who had to go through that abortion. Yeah. Right? So if you can imagine, it might be, not to decrease his level of pain, but it might have been even more traumatic for her mm-hmm. because she had to make that decision. So what what did she have to do to think about to to come to that conclusion that she's going to make that decision to abort the kid? Mm-hmm. Then she had to go to the clinic or the hospital or wherever. Then the doctor had to do what the doctor had to do, and she had to go through that physical pain. So like, there's levels yeah. to oh, her. We're not, we're not, we're not and if she, any of that. no, I'm just saying right. like, if she can move past and move on and actually have a family and be happy, you know, why can't he? Yeah. Right. So I'm just playing devil's advocate. He like could he do. And yeah. he, you know, so but that's, he doesn't have to go through that. Here's a question. In, in the pain that we've walked through, is it a choice to stay there? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yes. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. We can't put, we can't be victims every, for the rest yeah. of our lives. But how Eventually but you have so to get off all the society, cameras. Like, feel like they have to cling to that and like they are they because don't that's how they it's identify themselves and that's not okay but be like for and let it go we as men we as human beings we just as people we can't help who we love right we can't you love who you love so with that same account can he not help the way he felt about about that from back then of course so when we say it's, it's, it's a choice he's he's choosing to stay still connected with with that that situation from years ago, well, like you feel said, the way you feel. About, like, you know, we're not like talking about last year. No, no, but, but like, you feel the way you feel. But yeah, you to, but, but you have to move on. You got like bro, listen, on. man. I've had my heart broken by uh, quite a few women. Right. Um, if I continue to live with those thoughts, it would be painful. If I choose to like mentally relive those moments. Talking about it now, I can talk about it with right. you and go, oh, I remember that. That yeah. was that was hard, you know, right. that was heartbreaking, but it's whatever. But if I like dwell on it and just live in that, that pain will come back. 
thinking about like, oh, the abandonment mm-hmm. or, oh, the, you know, the lack of maturity or why does she make this choice or that choice? And I, I drive myself crazy living in that moment. And it's not fair to me. And, you know, at some point well, well, I might do something. I might call her and be, why didn't you do this? <laughs> 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 what, what time you calling her? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking about that time you broke my heart. Like, what <laughs> time is she going to court and getting that restraining order? Seven o'clock in the morning. So that's, that would be a choice that I'm making. But I'm making the opposite choice. I don't think about that stuff anymore. Right. Yeah, Occasionally it'll come up. Maybe I'm watching a show or maybe uh, a, a picture will come up or something. I'm like, oh, oh I remember, I remember that. that. I remember yes. that, right? Or a song. Or a song, or a song. right? Something or even a scent. Like, uh, there's, oh, yeah. there was, a, um, in high school, I used to wear this uh, scent. And when I smell it, I'm like, oh, it takes me right back. Yeah, mm-hmm. But what's really cool for me anyway. Cool water cologne. Thank cool you. Water cologne. <laughs> Thank you. I it was my David water John cool water. I told it. It was an obsession. It's <laughs> Simiaki, <laughs> baby. Uh, <laughs> what do you think I'm wearing right now? I'm wearing right now. See, right now. <laughs> see I had, I, bought, I recently bought like the cologne version, like the whatever, but that uh, one was like an oil base and it just smelled different. So, um, but no, I'm saying like when you see, when you think about about those memories for me i have fond memories of my ex-girlfriends mostly mm-hmm. um and even though it didn't end the way that i wanted it to i didn't want it to end first of all but even when they did end it didn't end the way i wanted it to still i have fond memories and i don't think about the negative uh aspects of those relationships it's interesting i appreciate you saying that the fond mm-hmm. memory because i could say this after every relationship that ended a new chapter of life like literally catapulted me to a whole world that I never was exposed to unless I went through that first. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the times I, I, I'm a, one of those individuals where I will take her and turn it into fuel. Mm-hmm. And like the one instance that I was referring to where I got hurt, I was so mad and all my boys at that time, you know, I grew up in the Temecula Riverside County area. So we were all in the skateboarding, dirt bike riding, mm-hmm. snowboarding, extreme sports kind yeah. of thing. Um, and so all I could do with all that hurt was pour it into my love and passion for sports, which ended up literally catapulting me into a, a, a professional realm that I ran with. Mm-hmm. If I didn't have that hurt, I don't know if I would have dived in as hard as I would to and become the professional that I was. Mm-hmm. It's like, I could look back, it's like, I kind of thank you, I guess, because I'm standing on cloud nine now, like on a whole new world, seeing and experiencing aspects that I never even would have thought of if you didn't do me wrong. Because I would have been like, oh, this is so great. No, she's so pretty. Like, I would have had no desire to go achieve that if I didn't have that hurt. See, I, I wish I would have taken that route. I took the, so the route that I took. So uh, without going into too much detail, um, prior to moving to uh, the Palm Springs area, I was born and raised living in L.A. And, you know, I had my first girlfriend right after high school. She broke my heart. And I was just like, I was trying to, like, fix that broken heart. I was trying Mm -hmm. to, like, get that feeling away. And I thought, well, if I get into a new relationship and I find a new girl, the old pain will go away. Mm -hmm. Not true, by the way, um, (laughs) because it's only temporary. But then I got into the next relationship. And the next relationship was like, that was the one, right? Mm -hmm. And I was, like, super in love. And I was, like, praying to God, like, yo, this is the one that I'm going to marry for sure. That didn't work out. Then I jumped into another relationship that didn't work out. And the way she did me at the end was like horrible. So I was like trying to give love a try. Right. And I was really like, you know, God, come on now. Like, you can't be, I just want to love like someone. This. Right. I just want someone to love me. I want to love somebody. And it didn't work out. So after that, I went on a rampage. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't focus on career like I should have. I was mm-hmm. like, I was focusing on women. And I, let me tell you something, bro. That's when the numbers racked up. Mm-hmm. Because at that time, I was at like maybe three or four, but it, went, it got to 30 real quick. <laughs> I, it was, it was, nobody, nobody was safe, bro. <laughs> no, nobody was Turning safe. to the Terminator. Look at all the Sarah Connors out there. All the Sarah Connors. It was Come with me <laughs> if you want to get Riz. <laughs> get to the chopper. Go, run. You turned into the predator. <laughs> hey, you know what? Get down. 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 Get down.
You was the Terminator. You was the Terminator. You was the unpopular friend. He'll find you. That's what he does. That's all he does. You was Orlando Constantine on that ass. But then. Thank goodness, back then I was, oh, working, I was working at the airport, San Francisco airport. And I worked, I worked for a place called- So you was doing international Yeah, wait, wait, no. I worked in a place called, called Flying Tigers. So FedEx eventually bought Flying Tigers, but I had flying benefits. And so being the Terminator, my homeboy, Dave, which Sam, Sam has met before, I said, you know, my boy, I, my boy Dave was in LA. He was like, hey man, you need to come down there. I said, no, let me use some flying benefits. Let me see what's going on down in LA. And when I went to LA for the first time, Kelly girls. it was not, I was a Terminator. We were all Terminators, male and females, because the, the women in LA will holler at you harder than the dudes will. I mean, that no, means back they, then, ain't the case. No, no, man. Back then, yeah. say, it was something else. First club I went to, I remember a place called Hollywood Live. Mm. And I saw my first celebrity there, Robert Townsend from back in the day. Some of y'all remember yeah, yeah, Robert yeah, Townsend. Robert Townsend. Yeah. But even more Watch important you. than Robert Townsend celebrities, I saw the soul train dancers at this club. And I said, oh my goodness, do y'all remember that Filipino sure one from back in the day <laughs> with the long hair? That's when I saw, and boy, let me tell you, up in LA, the sisters, national, they're all beautiful women and they will holler at you. So then, as a, as a predator, I was giving them what they wanted. So, uh, so we were both happy. Don't, don't say Predator, bro. <laughs> not in today's context. <laughs> well, stick with Terminator. Well, yeah, Terminator. Like, I know what you Predator, meant, but yeah, 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 yeah. stick with Terminator. We'll stick with Resonator. <laughs> it was all in pocket. So, put me up on the other hand, though, I knew one thing I couldn't do in life is live in L.A. Because I'd have five or six kids by five or six different women. So that's why I decided not to go to school in LA. That's what, why I went to school in San Diego. Because wow. my experience in LA, I said, there's no way in the world well, I can live in LA. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, they were just yeah, San Diego's not LA's, there. LA's still on a whole different level, bro. From uh, my experience. Okay, from my okay. experience. What you got, Nate? No, I, I, I want to get known with this, but with that tweet, it brought me back to college. It was this girl. I'll mm. say her first name because there's a lot of names like that. And I don't know where she's at to this day, but her name was Yaeli. That was my first, you could say real love, mm. that broke my heart. Mm. <clears throat> I was 20, and I bought her a promise ring from Walmart. So oh. I wanted to, you know. So Walmart, that's so sweet. Hey, that was 20 years old, I was a broke-ass college. Yeah. 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 That was 60 bucks back then, too. Had 70 bucks of my house. And we're serious at now. Oh, no, don't joke. <laughs> <jump. laughs> Do not disrespect this man's eight characters. No, I ain't. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey eight characters. No, you paid for those eight characters. Why you sneaky hitting them up? Right <laughs> no, that was that was my Riz ring right there. I got no Riz at that. No, <laughs> no. He was in love, y'all. He was gonna get I'll, a ring somewhere. Hey, no, I had some. I had some ring pop from the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Track and Jack. <Jackman. laughs> he had other options, right? He had other options, bro. Yeah, we don't work on that. Y'all ain't holding me. I'm about to take this whole table down. <laughs> just joking. I was just joking. No, so I got her a ring because I wanted to promise her that I'll be her first good man. Like I promise I'll get you something better. Yeah, you know, you know, ring pop. Yeah. Cherry, you like cherry? No, all I do is the shit. But uh, <laughs> anyways, she worked at, she interned at Telemundo. Mm -hmm. So okay. whenever downstairs where I work at, you know, they're all Hispanics and Latinos. Right. Latinas, when you talk about Telemundo, it always brings back that memory because I dated a girl who interned at Telemundo. And she dressed like an anchor woman, blazer, jeans, mm -hmm. juicy, um, juicy. Yeah, you know, that was that was a like orchata juicy. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> anyway, so got the ring. We had an arrangement to meet at the Cheesecake Factory at the Brea Mall nearby there. I think it's still there to this day. She never showed. Um, never showed. Never heard. Mm -hmm. Ghosted. Texted her. Hey, I'm here. I'm ordering you something you want. Order something. Just thinking she would want something to eat when she got there. Mm -hmm. Didn't get there. Never heard back from her to this day. I'm hurting. So that was, and the thing is, when I think about that tweet that he wrote, <clears throat> I also think that it might come from a place where, let's say, women or men have survived negative relationship experiences, uh -huh. and they struggle to trust a good person. Hmm. And I struggle with that. Not now so much. Maybe I'm too trusting at some things, just to give you the benefit of the doubt. But I'm more like, I'll trust you if you screw me over. Mm -hmm. But that's the growth it taught me. So maybe some people use that bad experience or trauma as a defense mechanism, yeah, or some people use that as a, a resonator mechanism. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
don't know. That's what that tweet brought back to me, though. I mean, I'm sitting here right now thinking what happened. Did you ever reach out to her to find out what happened? What? To this day, I don't know. Did you guys still work at the same place? No, no, this was back in college. Oh, right? back in college. So yeah, I was never, 20 years old at the time. And you never? Never heard from her since. Wow. Never heard from her. Like, okay. she was, we actually agreed in person at a hookah bar in Anaheim when I first met her that, actually, I was on first met her, we met again there, that let's go to Cheesecake Factory, you know, just to get to know each other. But that's when I realized, maybe, she didn't know I was going to do this. No one knew. But that's when I bought the promise ring at Walmart. Wow. Which is this year, whatever. Don't be like she would have showed up. You would have got to Tarjay. But, <laughs> but yeah, I got the, got the ring. Went to Cheesecake Factory. Ate the brown bread. We all love the brown bread. The brown bread. The brown bread. The brown bread. Yes, yes, yes. And motherfucker, I had to get two cheesecakes. It's a coat. So, mm-hmm. no, she never showed. Texted her, called her, didn't answer. To this day, nothing. I'm obviously over it now. Right. But that was my first real hurt. And thinking how relationship traumas can hurt people. Hey, you don't know how they're going to deal with it. You got to pay the price for the last man's mistake. Why, why do I got to do that? That's how I could have been. That's what I was thinking with that tweet. Defense mechanism for past relationship traumas that you take it out on someone else that they have to pay for that past man's or woman's mistake. Right. Well, let me ask you a question. And I know we got to move on to the next topic. No, no, no. We, we but I want to just talk, uh, ask you this question. Um, do you think it's uh, good or fair? Well, not I know it's not fair, but don't you think it's natural to... Um, to harden up a little bit after yeah. that kind of experience. Right. The reason why I ask is because, for example, if you touch the, the stove with the fire on, it's hot, you get burned, right? Yeah. So you're, the lesson there, there is, okay, well, don't touch the stove when it's hot, right? So that's mm-hmm. kind of like the lesson. And so you can't just go freely touching hot stoves. So when you're in a relationship right. and you get hurt, someone cheats on you, uh, someone does something uh, bad to you that affects you in a horrible way, of course, you're going to go to you're going to go into the next situation with extreme caution. I think that's burning. natural. I don't think that we should be paying for the mistakes of others necessarily, uh, but I can understand why you know someone who I'm dating might. How do I say it? Project. Well, definitely, definitely project, and not, the projection is the, the the bad thing. I think, right. but I think they do have a right to self preservation. It's like, I don't really want to, you know, I don't want to give that much love to you right away because it's my last relationship. relationship well, yes, but I'm just saying that, well, because that's healing, right? You got to take time to, to heal. And a lot of us don't take the proper right. amount of time. We're still trying to figure to ourselves heal. out. So it's like, how, right. what, what is the right time to heal? You, right. you, you have to go through that new water to figure out, yeah. okay, maybe I'm still hurt or, okay, no, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that. No, I get it too. I guess my question is, is it, isn't if isn't it natural to go through that? And that's the maturity that it promotes. Exactly. So that hurts. Now that set you set yourself up, to, and not to enter into a relationship or even dating somebody with their defenses totally wide uh, wide open, mm-hmm. you go in a little bit more cautious now. Because I really think about it, like who goes into a just a date with thinking all this stuff is going to happen. So you're a little bit more cautious now, and you can think a little bit more slower, so you won't get hurt the way they got hurt that one time. And that, 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 I think, right there is the maturity. That's the growth right there. <clears throat> I, I look at it a little different. Um, you know that about me. Of course. I'll give you some. Uh, I'll be like, Sam, the purple. sky is blue. Like, you sure it's not purple? No, it's, it's blue. blue. It's blue. Okay. I, I, I stick the obvious a lot. It's but, crazy blue. But there's something else to consider. You, you all mentioned healing. Yeah. If you go into another relationship and you haven't healed, right. then you're, you're setting up the new relationship from failure I'm right out the gate. Because if you're not... 100% genuinely yourself, mm-hmm. then they're not going to see you who for who Larry really is. Right. And so you might be handicapping that future relationship because you're still healing from past hurt. Mm-hmm. So the bigger question is, or the better question is, yeah, it's natural to go into a new relationship defensive, but then why go into a new relationship defensive? Well, not defensive, defensive. I meant cautious. Cautious. All, there you go. All, that's cautious. a better word, cautious. That's what I said. Cautious. 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 Different. Yeah. Well, but that's what you said, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're 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 in defense st- stance. Like I don't want to get hurt, so you got your your guard up. Well, then you can't go into that relationship mm-hmm. because you're guarded. No, you're, you're guarded. I said that a little bit different. Uh, no, you come in cautious, and as the relationship matures, your caution seems to go down a little bit as it grows. But right. if you, it, it, but okay, <clears throat> but that new person may not come in cautious okay, at all. Cautious at all. You know? They might be going in head first. Mm-hmm. They might be jumping in deep in the pool, like, 
I'm ready for love. I don't have baggage. And so Ooh, because you, a lot of people do. Mm. A lot of people do. <laughs> I, I, think I, I, think I, outside your box. Are. Think think outside. When you first met your wife, were you defensive? Were you cautious? Were you dealing with past hurts? Definitely was cautious. she? Definitely so what cautious. was she? Definitely cautious. But we you dived in she? though. You dived in half. We front. were open, yeah. but we were cautious. And, and that's what I'm talking we were about. With no expectation. Let's see where this goes. Then, what then, then to me, you weren't guarded. You went in with no expectations. Yeah, right. With that's the guard, but no expectations. Because when you first enter a relationship and you have expectations that this may be the person, I think that's the setup for the failure. I, I look at it differently because I think when you don't have expectations, you're not guarded. You're not putting anything on anyone. You're free. Mm. You, you, you don't have any weight for anyone to carry because that's when relationships do fail when you put expectations out there because my last somebody did something and I don't want you to do that. That's an expectation. When you're free as a bird and you're just like, hey, let's just fly and see where we go. That's not weight. You're not carrying anything. And so what Larry's, so what Larry's describing is the lack of healing in between that journey with someone new. So for example, if open your hands, if I took from you, mm -hmm. you like, damn, you took from me. Now close your hands. Now you can't receive anything. Right. So when you're guarded, you're, you're, you knuckled up. Mm -hmm. And so you, but now if you open your hands back, yeah, there's going to always be someone that comes to take, but there's also someone that can give more than what you've lost. See, see. And so you have to remain open, but that comes from healing. I see it a little bit different because even with the hand thing, I wouldn't come in like this. I wouldn't come out like this. I'd come in like this. You can't I can't put nothing in that hand. hand. Yeah, but I still it. can't put yeah. all that I want to give you in that hand. I can't give you this cup to hold. Yeah. I can put the keys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why take the keys when you get the, the cup? Yeah. Yeah. But that's what, because you, and I might because be the keys if the you get cup. that cup, it's likely to spill. That's why you keep it a little bit tighter. You're going to drink it fast. I, I can't hold a cup like that. My hand no. rolled up. I got to be open to receive it in okay. the first place. Okay. And that's all I'm talking okay. about. And that's I why I look at it a little different. I'm going to piggyback off of where Orlando is coming from, um, just from the set of expectations. Mm -hmm. Because what I've had to walk in my journey is to realize that there are expectations. They're unspoken expectations. Unspoken. And yeah. if they're unspoken expectations and you are at a place where you're, you're half clenched you're, and you're not... You're not in a space or comfortable to share those unspoken mm -hmm. expectations. You're going to fail. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever it may be, is going to fail because they don't know what that expectation is, and they're they're, they're trying to please you, and they can't hit they can't hit the target because they don't know what that expectation is. Because you set that bar, and you're not willing to share. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I want to give you these flowers, but you, your hands are clenched. I can't, you can't even accept them. Yeah. It's like, I don't like flowers. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell me. Yeah. <laughs> My last son, son gave, always gave me flowers and found out he was giving other people flowers. You know? so, <laughs> right. You know, it's like. So, yeah, I don't want flowers no more. But you think you're doing a nice right. gesture. Mm -hmm. so, I want some seeds chocolate. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, mm -hmm. you told me we're, that. We're all right, but you're right where you are at that time. To self preserve your life and 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 remain and eventually get back to an open heart. But I like what y'all said. So I know maybe you No, that's all good because I think what I want to get to with that tweet is the the conclusion. How we get there is I like to pr promote a more understanding and of the journey. Journey and mm -hmm. respecting the individuality mm -hmm. of men and women. Because we all share a desire for a healthy, loving relationship. We all share that. At a certain time. At a certain life. time. Where the, <laughs> where the your fists are closed time. or your palms are open. At the end of the day, I think we all share that. Because there's risk in being alone. There's risk in being together with someone.